Okay. So let me just check my notes, guys, make sure I'm up to the right point. Squares prefab. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is the next part. So I'm just going to grab this code and show you guys. So going back into Mono Develop in the box detection area, I'm just going to paste this in. And this part, we want to have this down here. Okay. So here, what I'm saying is, uh, as we did this before with the ball when it hits the wall and causes those sparks, it's pretty much the same thing. We're setting a variable here saying we, so we need the information particle squares. And then down here, when the, in, when the ball does go through that, uh, the box, uh, the bonus detection area, we're saying we want to create or instantiate the particle squares here. So this is why we put this here. We need to tell it what piece, what thing do you want us to create? And we need to have that information and we need to pass it to this instantiate function. So we're making the particle squares, the transform at the position, which is basically the, the bonus area detection box, the, the same position as that box. And then the transform dot rotation. This doesn't matter in this case because particles inside of Unity will always turn to face the camera. But we need to pass that information into the instantiate function. Okay. So I'm just going to click on command and S to save. Go back into Unity, watch this right hand side activity swirly thingy move bulb, whatever it is. Just make sure everything compiles okay, and that looks fine. If I click on the bonus area detection box, we can now see here the particle squares that we just wrote, which is this part right here. So that's why we can see it inside of the editor now here. And the particle squares, remember, we don't want to pull this one in. We want to pull this one in from inside the project view, okay? Particle squares, left click and let go. And we should see this now. So I'm actually just going to delete these ones from the scene here because this is a little bit confusing and it just cleans it up. So right click, delete, deleting the sparks, right click, delete, deleting the squares. And we're going to set this off. Now the, <laughs> I might have to just move the, uh, the box a little bit because this might take some time. It'll be easier if I just moved it and showed it you guys. Unless this is going to go through. No, okay. I'm going to shift it so you guys can see it easier. So left click on box box area bonus area object. Click W. I'm just going to move it to the top right because I know the ball goes up there. Click on play. Oh, and it just about missed it. Sorry. Uh, let me just move that down a touch. Click on play. Okay, there we go. So that blasted through. And let's just double check that again. Okay. Okay. So I think that should that should all be working just fine there, guys. Um, the box area, I just want to make this a little bit bigger. This box area, uh, sorry, the, the bonus area detection box. Clicking on the box, click F. Okay, just click on play. Oh, and I want to just put it to the top right again, just so that you guys can, so that we can see this faster. Bonus area, click W, move it over. Ah, oh, keep on missing this. We'll get there. There we go. Okay, and so that's working. That's working fine at the moment. Um, so let me just check the next part that we want to do. We want to add the prefabs to the bonus area and script inspector. We already did that. Hide the bonus area middle square and duplicate the bonus area. So as I said before, this middle bonus area square is just visually there so that we can move it around. Um, we don't need it visually in the game because that would look a little strange. So all you need to do is click on the bonus area detection box, 
and the mesh renderer inside the inspector, just click on the tick, and there you go, it disappears. But as you can see here, the green box still exists, which is the actual collision box itself that detects when the ball goes through. So I'm going to click on bonus area, uh, so we've got everything. I'm going to move it over this way to minus 2, just so we've got a round number. And I'm going to left click on it, I'm going to click command and C, command and V. And I'm going to go to the X and click on 2, and there we go. So we've got our two bonus areas. And if I click on play, we should get these going through. And hopefully I can get some to go through this time whilst, we're, whilst I'm actually playing. I'm also watching the score just to see how it clocks up once these do go through. Once these do go through. Because remember, we're giving an extra 50 points here, so that's, that's one of the things we want to check. So this is the uh, this should be the fun part, but it's actually getting hard to to get these through here, which I suppose is part of the challenge. You know, that's that's meant to be that's meant to be the way it works. If it was too easy, it wouldn't be fun. Whoa. Okay, there we go. So that went through just fine. Okay, so I think that should be pretty much it. Turn ball into oh yeah. So the other thing is, guys, I just noticed before that. If you're getting a bit of choppiness on the ball, whilst the ball is sort of moving, you're getting this um, sort of like flicks every now and then or, or it doesn't move smoothly, click on the ball and then go to the rigid body, interpolate and click interpolate. And what that'll do is that just smooths out the, the, uh, the ball transform change over time, the ball movement. It just recalculates the position from its last frame or something like that. I, I'm not exactly sure how that works but it smooths out the, the, the movement of the ball. So give that a try if you're getting something that's a little bit choppy. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, the, the only other point I wanted to mention for this tutorial, guys, was the, check out the Ping Pong Ping Ball X on iPhone, which is available now. Uh, the reason I say that is because that game is pretty much the one that we're following for these tutorial series, as I've mentioned before. Uh, it's free, and if you see something in there that you're wondering, hey, how, how did we do this or how did we do that? then please drop a comment, ask me some questions, and then I'm happy to sort of answer these in the upcoming videos as well. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's pretty much it for this, for this lesson, guys. You know, I hope, I hope that was useful. I hope it's uh, given you some ideas, and maybe you guys can find some cool ways to move the, the, the bonus areas around or come up with something funky, maybe like a triangle or, you know, something that moves around the screen. Drop me, a, drop me a link if it does go online or a video gameplay. It'll be great to see what, how you guys are doing this. I think i already seen one before from, uh, I think, Rodrigo. He left a link, and it's great to see that, you know, with the sort of breakout blocks that, uh, that were coming down. So thank you so much for, for passing that on. Uh, as always, guys, you know, thanks for the support as well. Comments are awesome. Please comment down below. Please tap on that like button down there or down here, wherever it is. That, that super helps. Uh, and if you can as well, share it on Facebook. Just click on that share button. Um, click on Facebook, the, the F button, and then just share that on your wall because that really, really helps as well. And obviously subscribe. You'll get all of the updates for the new videos as they come in. Um, but for now, guys, you know, thanks again. Thanks for all the support. Keep Stay tuned, and I'll be back soon for more videos. So happy developing, everyone. Bye-bye.